A Strange and Terrible Wonder The Black Dog of Bungay by Abraham Fleming This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Patrick Wallace A Strange and Terrible Wonder wrought very late in the parish church of Bungay, a town of no great distance from the city of Norwich, namely the 4th of this August, in the year of our Lord, 1577, in a great tempest of violent rain, lightning, and thunder, the like whereof hath been seldom seen, with the appearance of an horrible shaped thing, sensibly perceived of the people then and there assembled, drawn into plain method, according to the written copy, by Abraham Fleming. The Preface to the Reader among men it is grown in custom to have forewarnings of afterclaps, as beacons built upon hills which then are set on fire when danger is imminent and at hand, alarm bells serving to the same purpose, and other inventions of men proceeding and provided of policy, to prevent or else to prepare against that which is perilous. Every man can arm himself when hazard is at hand, to save him and his as he is able. For the preserving of temporal things, Jesus, how painful and venturous we be! and no sooner shall a premonition be given, but we are furnished, I warrant you, proof. God warneth us by signs from heaven, by fiery appearances in the air most terrible, by wonders wrought on earth, strange and unusual, by ex-inundations of waters beyond their appointed limits, by the removing of senseless trees from the natural place where they were planted, by the great power which the Prince of Darkness, through God's permission and sufferance, hath recovered, by many late most miserable murthers not to be named, much less to be committed among Christians, by insurrections full of danger and detestable treason on this side the seas, by tumults and uproars between princes of foreign nations, and what should I say more? by the trump of his sweet and heavenly gospel sounded unto us out of the mouths of his messengers. But we will not be warned, we will tumble still upon the bed of wantonness, and drink ourselves drunk with the wine of sensuality, that while we lie wallowing in the sink of our sodomitical sin, we may be consumed with a sodomitical or Babylonical destruction. God open the eyes of our hearts that we may see in what wilderness among what wild beasts and devouring serpents we do wander, and give us minds mollified and made soft, that at his works we may fear and be astonished. The occasion that I have wrote this warning, which I would to God I had the grace to follow, was a wonder lately wrought in Norfolk, and so lately wrought that the terror of the same is this instant fresh in memory, a spectacle no doubt of God's judgment, which as the fire of our iniquities hath kindled, so by none other means than by the tears of repentance it may be quenched. The order of the thing, as I received the same, I have committed to paper, for the present view and perusing of those that are disposed. It is grounded upon truth, and therefore not only worthy the writing and publishing, but also the hearing and considering. The Report of a Strange and Wonderful Spectacle Sunday being the 4th of this August, in the year of our Lord, 1577, to the amazing and singular astonishment of the present beholders and absent hearers at a certain town called Bungay, not past ten miles distant from the city of Norwich, there fell from heaven an exceeding great and terrible tempest, sudden violent, between nine of the clock in the morning and ten of the day aforesaid. This tempest took beginning with a rain, which fell with such a wonderful force and with no less violence than abundance, which made the storm so much the more extreme and terrible. This tempest was not simply of rain, but also of lightning and thunder, the flashing of the one whereof was so rare and vehement, and the roaring noise of the other so forcible and violent, that it made not only people perplexed in mind and at their wit's end, but ministered such strange and unaccustomed cause of fear to be conceived, that dumb creatures, with the horror of that which fortuned were exceedingly disquieted, and senseless things void of all life and feeling shook and trembled. There were assembled at the same season to hear divine service and common prayer, according to order, in the parish church of the said town of Bungay, the people thereabouts inhabiting, who were witnesses of the strangeness, the rareness, and suddenness of the storm, 
consisting of rain violently falling, fearful dashes of lightning, and terrible cracks of thunder, which came with such unwonted force and power, that to the perceiving of the people, at the time and in the place above named assembled, the church did, as it were, quake and stagger, which struck into the hearts of those that were present such a sore and sudden fear that they were in a manner robbed of their right wits. Immediately hereupon there appeared in a most horrible similitude and likeness to the congregation then there present, a dog, as they might discern it, of a black colour, at the sight whereof, together with the fearful flashes of fire which then were seen, moved such admiration in the minds of the assembly, that they thought doomsday was already come. This black dog, or the devil in such a likeness, God he knoweth all who worketh all, running all along the body of the church with great swiftness and incredible haste among the people, in a visible form and shape, passed between two persons as they were kneeling upon their knees, and occupied in prayer, as it seemed, wrung the necks of them both, at one instant clean backwards, in so much that even at a moment where they kneeled, they strangely died. This is a wonderful example of God's wrath, no doubt, to terrify us, that we might fear him for his justice, or pulling back our footsteps from the paths of sin, to love him for his mercy. To our matter again, there was at the same time another wonder wrought for the same black dog, still continuing and remaining in one and the selfsame shape, passing by another man of the congregation in the church, gave him such a gripe on the back, that therewithal he was presently drawn together and shrunk up, as it were a piece of leather scorched in a hot fire, or as the mouth of a purse or bag drawn together with a string. The man, albeit he was in so strange a taking, died not, but as it is thought is yet alive, which thing is marvellous in the eyes of men, and offereth much matter of amazing the mind. Moreover, and beside, the clerk of the said church, being occupied in cleansing the gutter of the church, with a violent clap of thunder was smitten down, and beside his fall had no further harm, unto whom being all amazed, this strange shape, whereof we have before spoken, appeared, howbeit he escaped without danger, which might peradventure seem to sound against truth and to be a thing incredible. But let us leave thus or thus to judge, and cry out with the prophet, O Domine, O Lord, how wonderful art thou in thy works! At the time that these things in this order happened, the rector, or curate of the church, being partaker of the people's perplexity, seeing what was seen and done, comforted the people, and exhorted them to prayer, whose counsel in such extreme distress they followed, and prayed to God as they were assembled together. Now for the verifying of this report, which to some will seem absurd, although the sensibleness of the thing itself confirmeth it to be a truth, as testimonies and witnesses of the force which rested in this strange shape thing, there are remaining in the stones of the church, and likewise in the church door, which are marvellously rented and torn, the marks, as it were, of his claws, or talons. Beside that, all the wires, the wheels, and other things belonging to the clock, were wrung in sunder, and broken in pieces. And, which I should have told you in the beginning of this report, if I had regarded the observing of order, at the time that this tempest lasted, and while these storms endured, the whole church was so darkened, yea, with such a palpable darkness, that one person could not perceive another, neither yet might discern any light at all, though it were lesser than the least, but only when the great flashing of fire and lightning appeared. These things are not likely with violence to be overpassed, but precisely and thoroughly to be considered. On the selfsame day, in like manner, into the parish church of another town, called Blybury, not above seven miles distant from Bungay above said, the like thing entered, in the same shape and similitude, where, placing himself upon a main bulk or beam, whereon some time the rood did stand, suddenly he gave a swing down through the church, and there also, as before, slew two men and a lad, and burned the hand of another person that was there among the rest of the company, of whom divers were blasted. This mischief thus wrought, he flew with wonderful force, to not little fear of the assembly, out of the church, in a hideous and hellish likeness. These things are reported to be true, yea, by the mouths of them that were eyewitnesses of the same, and therefore dare with so much the more boldness verify whatsoever is reported. 
Let us pray unto God, as it is the duty of Christians, to work all things to the best, to turn our flinty hearts into fleshy hearts, that we may feel the fire of God's mercy and flee from the scourge of his justice. A Necessary Prayer O God, which hast promised to be a shield to such as flee to thee for succour in their necessities, and with thy wings to overshadow them that they feel not the scorching heat of afflictions and miseries, we beseech thee that although we, through the infinite and unmeasurable sins which we commit, provoke thee to smite us with the iron rod of thy wrath and judgment, yet that it would please thee to remember that we are but frail flesh, subject to sin, and too too prone to offend, that it would please thee to cast thy gracious countenance upon us, that being restored into thy favour from which our offences have separated us, we may shroud our safeguard against all manner of annoyances whatsoever through Christ Jesus our only Saviour and Redeemer, in whose name, as he hath taught us, we say and pray, Abomne malo libera nos domine, deliver us from all evil, good Lord. Amen. Tibi laus honour et gloria in aium. Amen. Imprinted at London by Francis Godley, dwelling at the West End of Paul's. End of A Strange and Terrible Wonder, The Black Dog of Bungay.